So I just want to give an overview of the Solidarity Fund and um, the work that uh, we're involved in and, and what we're trying to achieve with the fund um, to give you some kind of context before uh, we get into the questions. So essentially the fund was created by the president uh, together with business and the purpose of the fund uh, is to unite South Africa uh, in the struggle to combat the COVID crisis. And so um, the thought behind it was there were lots of different initiatives that were kind of springing up all over the place between businesses and the civil society. And the idea was to create one consolidated uh, um, uh, initiative uh, behind one entity uh, that could be properly resourced and funded uh, to meet the, the, the crisis that, that, that is imminent. And the, I mean, the, the things have happened incredibly quickly. Um, you know, in the last three weeks, a new organization was formed. It has Section 18A status. It's a, it's a, it's a not-for-profit entity. It's an independent organization. So it's, although we have two government ministers on our board and we have representatives from civil society and labor and so on, it's an independent entity. We have no, we're not subject to the PFMA or any kind of government processes. There are no special controls or influence that, that government has. Um, and the board operates, uh, I mean, it's a very strong uh, in, independent board and operates uh, completely independently from both business and from government. Um, the, the focus of um, the, the, the Solidarity Fund is really on three things now. The first is uh, on the health response. So, and this was one of the um, reasons for the establishment of the Solidarity Fund was to help and support augment government's efforts to get the health system ready for the health crisis. And um, that has meant uh, rapid um, uh, response and, and procurement of critically needed uh, protective equipment, testing kits, um, ventilators, and we found ourselves, I mean, one of the advantages of the Solidarity Fund as opposed to government is that we have uh, incredible agility, ability to, to, to move quickly. I mean, as you'd all appreciate, you know, we're one of 190 countries that are competing for the same uh, medical goods out in the, in, in, the, in the international market. And that requires, uh, um, when orders become available from reputable sources, you need to be able to move quickly. And we have been doing the bulk of the procurement that's required for, um, you know, for, the, for the health system. In particular, we have uh, uh, facilities in place for about 670 million rand of, of uh, um, protective equipment for frontline healthcare workers. Uh, we've approved um, 170 million rand of protective equipment for the 30,000 uh, healthcare, community healthcare workers who will be doing the mass testing. We've approved 120 million rand of uh, protective equipment for community healthcare workers that are working for NGOs outside of the state system. Uh, 250 million rand uh, to double the testing capacity of the National Health Laboratory Services. Um, so these are all very significant uh, interventions uh, that have happened in a very short space of time to support our health system. And, and, and I can truly say that, you know, if it wasn't for our interventions, the, the, the position of our health services in relation to being prepared for this, for this, this, this pandemic would just be, you know, um, nothing close to, to what it is. I mean, we, we are providing the single greatest kind of uh, uh, procurement uh, intervention to, to help support our health services. I would also say that, that the money that we have uh, raised, which I'll get on to, uh, to in a minute, um, is all being channeled to direct procurement and interventions. So every single expense uh, that we have is related to direct uh, um, uh, impact interventions. All of our consulting, the people who are working there, the, 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 the businesses that have been supporting us in, in, um, in our communication campaigns, in our, uh, um, um, the, the management of the fund, Everything has been pro bono. Even the, the, we, we don't pay bank fees. Uh, Imperial Logistics, who's managing procurement and logistics for us, uh, are doing it pro bono. 
So we've created an incredibly efficient vehicle to channel resources from the public and from corporations and businesses directly into where it's most needed and having the greatest impact. And just one final thing on our, on our health response. Our health response is integrated into the government's national, you know, the, the, the Department of Health efforts in terms of determining what are the main priorities uh, for the health system and to ensure that we have one national health effort. So between business and government and the Solidarity Fund, there's one integrated effort to determine what the priorities are and to procure against those priorities. So that's our first area of focus is the health response and a huge proportion of our resources and efforts has been going into, the, into that area. The second uh, area of focus is in, the, is in the humanitarian efforts. And this is, you know, part of our mandate is to help support those whose lives have been affected by the COVID uh, epidemic. And um, there we are focused primarily at this stage on um, the issue of food security and hunger. And I think everyone would kind of appreciate that this is something that potentially can uh, cause huge uh, um, um, uh, breakdown in, in social cohesion and, uh, and is also, you know, the single biggest threat to the success of the lockdown uh, initiatives. You can't keep people at home if they're hungry. And so uh, we are looking to do an emergency intervention, relief intervention that would, that would kick off this weekend with uh, supporting 250,000 families. Uh, but the food, insecure, the food security issue is a much bigger problem than we are able to address as the Solidarity Fund. So we see our role as a critical short-term intervention, but we're working with business and governments around what is a kind of one to six month intervention that's required, because you probably have circa 2 million families that are food insecure in South Africa right now. And that's a problem which is much bigger than, than we can solve. And in relation to that, I would say, you know, both in the health response and in, the, in our humanitarian efforts, our focus is really on where our resources are most needed. We want to have the biggest possible impact with the funds that we have available. And our total uh, funds available are going to be a very small part of what the, 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 the funds that need to be mobilized around the national effort are. And so when we use our money, we have to be really clear that we're not a small part of a bigger kind of government procurement effort, that, that there's real additionality. When we spend our money on either procurement or in the humanitarian space, that if we weren't there doing what we're doing, that impact would not happen. Um, and so, you know, that additionality lens is a, is a, is a very strong um, kind of filter for us when we think about where we spend and where we invest. Um, we have got an, uh, um, uh, an understanding now with, with Treasury that some of the money we've been spending on procurement, we're going to be able to recoup and recycle back into, uh, into additional procurement for the health response. So the bulk of our money will be spent on the health response, and, and, uh, but we will still spend significant amount of money in the humanitarian effort. And the third area of focus for us is the solidarity campaign. And the campaign is really about uniting the nation. Uh, it's about um, um, mobilizing and inspiring acts of solidarity. This is from individuals, organizations, communities. Uh, it goes from you know, con a contribution I can make to the solidarity fund, uh, to, uh, you know, practicing good hygiene, isolating if I'm ill, but also about, you know, what we can do kind of collectively. How can we mobilize uh, communities around trying to make sure that uh, people, you know, who are most vulnerable, you know, receive food parcels in those communities. There's an incredible amount of community organization that has taken place um, uh, over the last kind of six to eight weeks. And we're trying to really um, uh, put wind in the sails of, of those things and say like, you know, we're only going to be able to defeat this pandemic and come out of this if we all play our part as individuals, as organizations and as communities. So how do we unite and mobilize the nation behind um, this, this uh, campaign is our third major area of work. We haven't spent any money there because all of our, our uh, advertising and our national campaign on television and radio is currently has, you know, is, is, has been pro bono, but uh, we may have to spend money there in time. But that's a, it's a critical part of our, of our campaign because or of the work that we do as the fund because ultimately the resources that are needed to deal with, uh, with COVID are much, much bigger than the Solidarity Fund has. And so what we're trying to do there, as, as I said, is to kind of inspire and mobilize the efforts of, of, the, of our entire society behind uh, you know, what we can all do to, to, to make a difference. 
So those are the kind of three core areas of focus. Um, we have raised about 2.3 billion rands in commitments. We hope that we will get to somewhere between three and four billion rand. Um, the majority of that will be spent on the health response, uh, followed by um, the humanitarian efforts. Um, as a point of clarity, we are not uh, um, uh, we, we, we're not currently in a position to support small businesses. That's been a, a question that's come up a lot. You know, there, there are other funds that have been mobilized in society, in particular the Oppenheimer uh, money in the South African Futures Trust and the, um, and the, uh, the, the, the Rupert's intervention, which is geared towards uh, supporting small businesses. But we don't have the resources to really make any meaningful impact in the small business space. So we're focusing on, on the health response and humanitarian effort and our, and our solidarity campaign. Um, finally, I'll just say that, um, you know, we, we are committed to um, uh, uh, the best governance practices, um, complete transparency. Our we new website will be going live next week where we will be, have on the website all the donations we're making, where all the funds are being spent. So we want to have a situation where it's completely transparent you know, where the money is going. I mean, we, we, we're trying to get as many South Africans as possible to donate and contribute to the fund. We, we've had, I would guess, seven or 8,000 South African individuals. We'd like that to get into the tens of thousands and ultimately into the hundreds of thousands through mass SMS campaigns and so on. But, um, you know, a key um, measurable for us is not just how much money we raise, but how many people we raise money for, because that's a kind of indication of the broad uh, support that we're able to galvanize for the funds.